Hello, gamers, and welcome to the PCC, the Prime Championship Circuit. We are a community-driven tournament that holds and shows you predecessor competitive gaming. My name is Ardog with the Triple G, and I'm your host for today's event. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to be here. We started with 26 teams and 18 have been eliminated and now only eight remain. Two weeks ago, we finished our Swiss and group stages. Yesterday, we had our quarterfinals and today we hold our semifinals and of course, the grand finals. Can we please have some hype in the chat? Each team has persisted and persevered to reach this main stage and to be a part of greatness and rewrite predecessor history. This is PCC7, baby. They have put in the work with the immeasurable amount of scrims and hours mastering heroes in their respective roles, training themselves in the micro and macro in the world of predecessor. They've come so far and victory is just within reach. Any one of these four teams remaining can claim the title of PCC champion. But the questions we always ask ourselves is who is the best and who will be a part of the elite and be able to wear the crown of PCC champion. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let me welcome our top desk analyst right beside me. I have Grady, the Graddington content creator and all around predecessor gamer. How are you Grady? I'm doing well. That was actually a beautiful speech. I want to give you props for that, our dog. Aww, beautiful, thank beautiful. You so much, Daddy. <laughs> Happy to be on the desk with two <laughs> legends today. Let's get hyped, everyone. And of course, Mugi Wawa, our friendly neighborhood statistics enthusiast, predecessor game analyst, and coach. How are you, Mugi? Well, I'm doing fantastic. I've been watching all those top four teams screaming against each other for the past week and I have to say, like, we are going to have some amazing game today because usually teams started to have like a little bit of weaknesses and stuff. But here, all those top four teams, like you said, micro, micro, everything looks so good, draft as well. And so we're going to have like many bangers. I'm quite sure of it today. And we saw how hyped it was from yesterday's um, uh, quarterfinals, but today is our semifinals. Um, just for our community out there, if you like what you see on your screen, please kindly drop us a follow, hit that subscribe button. We're on X, Discord, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, all of the social medias you can ever imagine. Thank you so much for your support and being a part of the PCC community. If you type exclamation point support, this will send you to our GoFundMe link. So we're still building our prize pool. So every contribution goes towards the players as well as enhancing the quality of the PCC production. We're always cooking up a storm in the kitchen and we want to be able to elevate your experience here at the PCC. We wouldn't be here without your help. We've already reached a thousand dollar incentive mark, but we have still yet to unlock the future events we have in store for the $3,000 and $5,000 marks. A cutting to the core 12 hour episode and a special event with proceeds going to a charity of the top donors choosing. The thousand dollar incentive unlocks us an all star PCC event for this year so far. So we truly thank you and we wouldn't be here without everyone's support. But now it's time to get into these games. Let's pull up the bracket. We have four teams going head to head to contend for a spot in the grand finals today. Grady, tell us what you see on the screen here. So we see that remaining teams left. We have first off Profs versus D-Lab. That's going to be an amazing set. Two of the the longest are two of the teams that have been in the PCC events the most. And then after that, we're going to have Chefs versus Indecisive on the other side of the bracket. Two fantastic teams, one of them being all EU, the other one being all NA. Yeah, exclamation point bracket will take you to a link that shows the current standings or score as well as the roster from each team playing today. 
But what else is there to do on a beautiful Sunday? There are games to be watched, games to be won, and games to be played. Let's talk about that first best of three semifinal series, Professors and Dirty Lake and the Boys. We've got some statistics here. Uh, Grady, I'm going to call on you to talk about what you see on the screen yet again. All right, so we see in our KDA department, we profs or the professors have a 6.56 KDA versus DLab at a 5.06. So we see profs like to fight and they also get a lot from that fight. They benefit a lot from fighting. So you got to be careful if you get into those perma fight scenarios versus the professors. Uh, D-Lab are no slouches, but professors are definitely taking the cake in that department. In the OBJ department, the objectives were almost identical here. So both teams very objective oriented. That's what you like to see in uh, competitive play. Uh, profs at 4 on the dot and then D-Lab at 3.89. In gold per minute, both teams very similar, but professors taking the cake in that department as well. So those guys like to prioritize their farm. Plus, as you saw from their fighting statistics, they are benefiting a lot. So they're getting a, a gold income boost there as well. In terms of damage per minute, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. In terms of damage per minute, go ahead, Grady. Uh, in terms of the damage per minute, as we see that the profs like to fight a lot, and you can see that reflect here in these stats as well. But D Lab at 27.50 damage per minute, they're doing pretty well in that department. And the D Lab seem to be the CS kings, though 33 CS per minute compared to the professor's 29.1 CS per minute. The most banned champion or most banned hero for the professors are FaZe. We know that. The Crazy Fool and Survivor do not like to play against FaZe, so that is just a perma ban across the board for the professors. And then D Lab like to uh, prioritize the Chimera ban, getting rid of that aggressive jungler if their jungler North does not decide he wants to play it. The most picked is no surprise for professors Richter for Crazy Fool. Of course, you know that is going to be a high prio for them. He's deadly in his hands. And then on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys, they like to pick Drongo a lot for their carry Lakenator. And as we saw his performance yesterday, he is very proficient on that Drongo pick. Yogi Wawa, anything else you would like to add? Well, to be fair, I love stats, so I have like a couple things to share. And we were talking about Lakenator on the Drongo. And I know Lakenator, like, is not always like in the conversation of top carry. But I have to say, it's the third time, like if we take only like the stat of yesterday, that is the number one KDA carry of the tournament, of the main event. Will it keep continue that trend today? We will have to see. But on the top KDA, we also have Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper was at 16 KDA yesterday, when the second top player is only at 9.8. Like Soul Reaper was absolutely crushing with also the top average damage per minute of any single player. So here we have like some Titans facing against each other. And the last thing I would like to bring also is Dirty Lake and the boys actually have surprised me quite a lot because they're the only team that break the two words per minute marks. Normally top team are around 1.5, 1.6 words per minute. Well, Dirty Lake and the boys are 25% higher than that with two words per minute. So they kind of win games through vision, it seems, with this very like farming playstyle as we see from the CS per minute, but also like taking great engagement and not dying. And I think a vision is a big portion of it. And it's certainly evident how they they play because they reached this stage. They worked so hard to get here. Um, but we do have to talk about that Drongo yet again. Let's talk about some Drongo numbers here. He's been one of the top picked heroes. Grady, what else can you tell us about what you see on the screen? Well, as you see on screen through Swiss and Groups plus yesterday's stats, 75 games played. That's a lot of games played. Uh, looking at the pick rate, 86.08%. So this character is in pretty much every single game that we have seen so far. Ban rate getting close to 9%. So not banned very often. More of the time, we're going to see him in the games. And then when he is on a team, 60% win rate. That's an insanely high win rate for a hero. That is insanely high indeed. And D-Lab also prioritized Drongo by first picking him as well. But we got to talk a little bit more about these teams and get our predictions in. Because it's predictions time, everybody. All right, Mugi, I'm going to start with you. So what do we know about the professors? 
Well, the professors is a long-standing team, like Gratty mentioned earlier. Uh, they have been like already winning tournaments, but it's true that in the previous PCC six they didn't really show up, and so I feel like they here they have like a hunger to win to prove themselves that it was just like a slip up last time, and so they looks very 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 ready, and we have seen like. It's one of the team also that I feel like on the macro plays, they're well advanced. We see many times they go for this type of strategy when they send only two people on a big objective like the Primal and the R Prime, while the rest of the team is actually creating space. And it feels like they're very confident with those plays while other team are not yet there. And of course, like crazy full Rictor for the highlight plays. Everyone is kind of scared to go into this Rictor, despite the fact that he's kind of full of the meta for most team. Like, on the side of Professor, we still see it a lot. And of course, on the other side, what do we know about Dirty Lake and the boys, Grady? Dirty Lake and the boys, another long-standing team. I am a former teammate of Dirty Lake and the boys, and create are insanely talented players all across the board. Um, I think that if they play the normal Dirty Lake and the boys style, balancing the map pressure, controlling the map, controlling the objectives, not getting picked before objectives in traditional Dirty Lake and the boys fashion. I think that they're going to have some banger games today and they actually might have a shot at moving on past the professor's hurdle. Any two of these teams can win, but it's time to put our predictions. Mugi, you have to choose which of these two teams will make it out of this best three series. Here it's super close. I feel like any team can take it, but it's the game of it. And I'm gonna select Dirty Lake and the boys simply because they've been like fighting so hard to get like a W. They always have been like so close. And I feel like that could be their moment, but they have like a tough road ahead of beating the professor first. All right, Grady, it's your turn. Um, I hate being put on the spot here. Like Mugiwawa said, these two teams are insanely close in skill, in play style, just all across the board, amazing players. There's not any single one of these players slouches in their uh, in their role. Um, they're all absolutely top three, at least, in their roles. So it's hard to say. I might have to give it to Profs, though. Uh, the history between these two teams, uh, you know, in scrims, D-Lab take games off of the professors, but when it comes to tournaments, Dilem has yet to come past the professors. I hope the best for them in this tournament in PCC7. But like I said, I got to give it to props for this one. This is a hurdle that the D Lab has to get over. They've always consistently been in the finals and semifinals, but they've never landed a championship. I am rooting for Dirty Lake and the boys. They, they have the Canadian duo, the, the offlaner, who also lives in Canada. They deserve a win this time around, so we're locking them in. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into the draft. We talked about Drongo being a priority pick. Mugi, what else are you expecting to see? Well... It depends of what we're looking like as a band. It seems that Dirty Like and the boys, every time they were against someone, they really like do their homework. And here we see a Calarity band, like professors doesn't want to play against the Calari. It's something that can be quite chaotic. And of course, North is a very proficient Calari on the side of Dirty Like and the boys. And we banned the face, which is interesting because usually it's a professor band. And that's something I love about this meta about PC7 is that it's super open and we can ban what we think is good on the enemy team. We don't have to be forced to ban. And see, we see the Zarius first pick is very strong. Oh, actually, okay. So the ban of the phase was for professors, as we see that we have like kind of a little shift and we got Dirty Lake and the boss binding the, the, the Kalari here. And uh, then we get like the Zarius. It's kind of like a priority ban, kind of have evolved a lot. All right, yeah, I was going to say I was a little shook to see the exact same bands that I would have expected, but on the reverse of each other. So we had a little bit of a snap but we got it fixed. We see Zaris being first picked for Dirty Lake and the boys. Very high prio yesterday. A lot of teams were looking to first pick that. Very flexible in the offline and the jungle and just a strong pick overall. Then we see Professors picking up Gideon or uh, Professors picking up Gideon and Severog. Severog, not something that they typically play, but Nitro was piloting it yesterday. You might see six on it sometimes. 
but I'm gonna have to guess that it's going to the offlane and gonna be in Nitro's hands. Gideon for Soul Reaper, very powerful pick. He was going crazy on it yesterday. I expect to see the same performance today. We see Argus and Narbash being locked in. Argus going to the mid lane, not the support role because we see that Narbash locked in for Toasty in the support. So Toasty, amazing Narbash player. I expect to see some great plays. And then Argus is a powerful champion for Appy. He's gonna be able to do some damage there on the map. So I see like this Severok pick on the self professors is because Lobber has been like playing Severok two times and they don't want him on it. And we all know what Lobber do with Severok. We have seen against like Flow State yesterday some like one subjugate after all prime that completely turned the tide and also like amazing play to defend against a double buff. So Professor want none of that shenanigans and decided to lock also the Drongo. Like we talked about the Drongo and only on the main event stat by themselves like. We got eight games, Drongo got picked eight times and got 75% win rate. So Drongo is a force to be reckoned with. And here, Dirty Lake and the boys, they don't want to give like the wild card of that Serrat offlane that sometimes Nitro loves to play. Uh, and so that's gonna be like kind of removed because it uh, can be like a pretty good dive. And here we remove the Twin Blast. Yesterday, the top two carry were Drongo and Twin Blast, and so Professors getting the opportunity of being in that situation that they pick the Drongo right before the bans happens, removing the Twin Blast will probably force like a nature on something that we haven't seen him played yet in that PCC7. So we see Chimera being picked up for the Professors. Very strong jungle pick. 4-6, so we can guarantee now that Severog is going to be in the hands of Nitro. Um, we are expecting to see an AD pick here for uh, for D-Lab, as Mugiwawa said. The pool has been thinned. Two characters that Laken are very, or Lakenator is very comfortable on, both off the table. But we see them locking in the Kira. Very strong pick. Tough lane, though. The Kira Narbash lane, very going to be a very tough lane for them. Very little wave clear. Very little push. They're going to be under their tower, begging for mercy, begging for some ganks for a while. And then we see the Kwong locked in. Very, very strong. I'm very surprised to see Kwong go all the way to the end of our draft here. That's not typical in these drafts. So we have Zerus and Kwong, very powerful bruiser frontline duo for Dirty Lake and the boys. I'm interested to see what the professors are going to round their comp out with here. Do they go for the Rictor? To be fair, against Narbash Kira, yeah, they go for the Rictor with the Drongo, pairs very well, allowed to apply a lot of pressure. They don't have any issue in terms like, of pushing power because they're against the Narbash and Kira lane. But at the same time, we kind of have like a double bruiser Narbash with two very high carry backlines so on the lab. So two teams really can function very well, to be honest. Now that we have this draft, though, we're, I'm looking at the D-Lab team comp. Grady, what is their strategy going into this game one? So what I'm imagining their strategy is going to be is either give duo or make duo lane their weak side because they're very low push, or what they could do is they could take advantage of the fact that Survivor and Crazy Fool will probably be aggressive, probably be looking to land kills, especially by hooking that big target Narbash, and then North can look to camp that. They do have the option of sitting in mid lane as well. It's a little bit tough of a gank because of the Gideon, but Argus plus Zerus does give you a lot of kill potential. So I'm excited to see what they look to do. But on the other side, Mugi, I'm asking the same question. What is the strategy with the Professor's team comp? To be fair, they have a very, very strong like mid-game team comp, like with a lot of dive potential. Of course, Gideon Camera is a very like strong way of dominating the whole map through the mid and jungle. And they also have, like we said, like this strong dual lane that can like set up a lot of things while the Narbash Kira is gonna be like having some trouble. But they really need, in my opinion, to start like snowballing the game because if they wait too long, true, Severog is a great scaling hero. But against Argus plus Kira, I feel like they have enough damage on Dirty Lake and the boys to kill this unkillable tank in a sense. So the ball is on the side of Professors to make it rolling. If Dirty Lake and the boys manage to survive, probably Professor is going to be for a tough late game. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, game one of the semifinals, Dirty Lake and the Boys versus the Professors. Get your points in, make sure you have your drink ready, cheer for your favorite team. Let's send it over to Spooky Mars and F6. Thank you, as always, to the desk for that fantastic setup. And I mean, what a way to start the day off here, F6, two titans of the scene. We've seen these guys time and time again clash against each other. 
And today, it, it truly does feel like they both have a lot to fight for going up against the other. Yes, I mean, I could not agree with you more. I mean, we talked about it time and time again. We have these top four teams that are just ready to go. It's never been this close in a PCC ever. And man, I can't wait for this first semifinals. And there is blood to be spilled on this map today. Neither of these teams wants to go home. D-Lab has clashed against the professors multiple times in PCC history. And historically, it's been a team that they've struggled to really get past here. But with time comes experience, and with experience comes countermeasures, ways to find solutions. So the question becomes, have they found a solution to the professors? We know they've scrimmed each other. These guys are partners on the, on the map, outside of the tournament. They play a lot. But do you think they finally found the way to get past this hurdle and push Radio themselves that last stretch to the finals? I think they've found their way. I think they've found their footing heading into the semifinals today. They had a wonderful showing when it comes out to the quarterfinals. And I think they're in their groove. Still, professors are a tall mountain to climb. There's a reason why they show up every single tournament. And I mean, it's just gonna have to come down to who can make those right plays and not make as many mistakes as the other team today. I mean, it says something that we're in the semifinals right now. And Dirty Lake and the boys, they're looking to give the professors their first loss of this tournament. They have been no slouch themselves, taking quite a few wins throughout the different stages of this of the tournament so far. And it's all on the D-Lab team now to find that way forward. And already you can see a little bit of movement from Soul Reaper, getting some vision down early. And we talked about Soul Reaper a lot on the desk there and how frequently he likes to rotate and get active on this map. Looking at the team mm -hmm. that the professors have around this Gideon as well. I mean, are we expecting to see him over on this solo side a little bit more? Oh, no doubt. I mean, there's a lot of times where you expect the mid laner to be rotating towards the dual lane. But with Crazy Fool over there and the option of having the Chimera, a lot of times you just see Soul Reaper go to the off lane because it's a more secure kill. A lot of people are not expecting that off lane to get ganked as much. And then they just kind of just reciprocate that with the Chimera going towards the dual lane to kind of suppress the action on both of these lanes. And that's really how they get that pressure applied. Well, let's talk about this duo lane a little bit. I know we covered it on the desk. Lincolnator and Toasty over here. All that thought six already making an active rotation onto Lobber. Link has been expended and followed as well. Should be able to find his way out, but the root comes down. That could spell a different story for Lobber. Stage is low, can't find the way out, and first blood comes through. Less than three minutes into the game. Six makes his presence known, and the answer is to rotate onto the left side as well. Crazy fool. Link's back out, trying to find a way back to the tower. And they find a thunk. Link comes out from north, and he finds the kill! A kill for kill across the board. We're already getting bloody here, F6. They are coming out here to play today, Spooky. The gank for gank, and they both successfully got it off. Blinks have been suspended out, and but the real question is where that first blood went, and that is to the professors. So they do have a tiny bit of a lead. Crazy Fool doesn't have the blink down, but he has the support, right? So great start to this game, and we can already see the comp competition just going at it. And the first blood going to this Chimera as well is not an insignificant thing, right? Six likes to get active. He likes to start fighting early on. So having that little bit of extra gold, that does benefit the professors as well. But do you think the kill on that right side is more valuable on a, a map nature than being able to pick off Crazy Fool there? I do think so. When it's going towards six, he's playing Chimera. Right now, he wants to have the best early game possible. He's playing that aggressive role. And for him to have a little bit extra gold, he's going to be able to use that to pressure out the rest of the map. So giving him that extra little bounty is going to work a little bit more in their favor on the side of the professors, because it's going to take a little bit for North to really be able to impact as much as he wants on that Zaris compared to that Chimera. Now, we were going to talk a little bit about that duo lane. As we was mentioned, Toasty and Lakenator don't have really a whole lot of pressure. They're probably going to be spending a lot of time back at that tower line, trying to last hit these minions, maybe not looking to, for too many fights here. Do you think the kill on Crazy Fool gives them any extra pressure 
Or do you think it's too early for them to really make too much of an advantage out of that? It's just a little bit too early, in my honest opinion. When it comes to Kira, she just does not have the wave clear that they do on the side of the Professors with that Drongo and on that Richter. And Richter's able to punish a little bit more for the misposition. And he can also, if he hits that Riplash, we talk about it time and time again, it just allows for them to get able to capitalize on it. And so they're going to have to still be careful on the side of D-Lab. I've always said displacement is the most powerful form of CC. Right, well, right next to death, but who's counting that <laughs> one just yet? Keep your eyes on this jungle. Six on the right side, or the left side here. Oh Looking for some invades. Oh Not going to be able to find too much here. May look to see if they can find a pull here. Thump comes through, keeps Toasty alive. That should be a disengage from six. Nothing to find here, really. No, not too much, but what that did allow for them to do is to be able to crash that minion wave underneath that tower. And now they're going to be able to get that reset as you see they're getting off right now. So they can come back to this lane with the power spike and try and get a little bit more of an advantage. Even though D-Lab does have a nice little free setup, they're able to counter it. It's still good for that jungler rotation to come over there, look for something, still get timers on that camp to be able to allow to get more information so they can make their next move. Now, from what we've seen so far, the professors have kind of been setting the pace of the game and where the aggression starts. And that's not really something I'm super used to seeing. The professors really enjoy their objective fights. And they tend to be a team that kind of sits rather quietly. They're not too worried about forcing issues until those objectives come up. You may see something change here as Appy Picker makes the rotation over this left lane. Stun comes through. Crazy Fool is the target. He's getting shredded down. That's an easy kill for the Argus. Pull back, look oh, straight man. over to the bank, dude. This is an early objective, only seven minutes in. I don't think the professor can actually answer this one. No, I mean, they had a plan right there. When it comes towards Dirty Lake and the boys, they know Crazy Fool is that determining factor into all the mid to late game fights. So they're trying to slow down so he cannot get online as quick. So they're able to get that rotation off and is executed gracefully and that allowed for them to get that early faint tooth. But great job on the professors here as you see them going after this mini prime to try and at least trade. But here comes some pressure. Is here. Black Bolt comes down, shredding Appy Pictures. Health bar, but Lobber also makes the rotation. Six trying to jump in. Appy already half health, but notably that Mini Prime still up has not been taken. And the professors have been forced back away from the objective. This could be D Lab's chance to secure both of them. In that left side, get pushed in. And the Mini Prime falls this time to D Lab F6. This is not what we're used to seeing. No, it is not. We talked about if D-Lab had a plan going into this game. I said they were on point and they are on their flow. And this is what we're seeing right now. They're able to answer back that first initial gank. And then now they're able to capitalize on Crazy Fool not having his blink up, getting the pressure inside of Duel Lane and rotating that pressure immediately onto that mini prime to be able to get it. And right now D-Lab is in that driver's seat. Two objectives to their names, two kills. They have the gold lead right now. I'm eager to see what they do with it. Professors have historically been this objective-based team fight team where that's where they put their chips down. That's where they're always at their finest state and it's where they're looking to really make their plays. Seeing them get pushed away from two objectives back to back. I mean, D-Lab has to be feeling very confident right now. Question is, how much leverage do they have to really abuse this lead? Keep your eye on six here, stalking around this left side of the map. With how unsafe this duo lane is, you have to be very careful about this Chimera. Yeah, they got a nice little freeze underneath that T1. Six skin looks like it's taking his reset. They're unable to really find anything in that duo lane, but you're going to be able to expect to see that a lot. And talking back to like how much of a lead D-Lab has, yes, they can use this advantage to keep themselves going, but they cannot stop. They have to keep executing this slow play, making the right picks, making the right maneuvers and rotations, because we do know professors, when it comes to that mid to late game, their objective fights, when all five members are together, they are arguably one of the best team fighting teams that we have in the PCC. Without a doubt, that's where things are really going to start getting interesting, in my mind. Lava over here on the right side hasn't been disturbed too much since that initial gank. 
And, you know, we talked about Soul Reaper and how frequently he likes to rotate, but we haven't really seen a whole lot of that activity from him on this Gideon so far. And it's not that this is an uncomfortable pick. We've seen Soul Reaper on the Gideon time and time again. He has a phenomenal character here in 6. Activist North drops the Coliseum and Soul Reaper drops the Black Hole. Forces North to disengage. He's gonna keep his life. But what do you think the reason is? We haven't seen Soul Reaper really getting active so far. I think D-Lab has just been a little bit quicker on what they want to capitalize on. So the by time that Soul Reaper wants to rotate, he doesn't have the advantage to do so. They're not in the right position or the mid wave is not in the state to allow him to roam. A lot of times when you're seeing those mid laners roam or just any laner in general, they're setting their wave up. So when they roam, they're able to come back to be able to still get the same amount of XP as if they were waiting there. But it's just not lining up for him right now. But yet, we're only 11 minutes in. We still have time to see his impact into this game. And I think it's going to come down to the mid-game professor's gameplay. Absolutely. And with that mini prime, first tower falls. Gold goes the way of D-Lab. They're just trying to line their pockets right now, F6. The gold is starting to spill out a little bit. Professors may be looking for a chance to pick some of that up for themselves here. Siege is still good over the left side for the Professors. Their tower untouched in that duo lane. Early Lake boys have been feeling some pressure on their own tower. Are you expecting to see a more concentrated push on this left side? Try to get that gold evened out a little bit. I'm expecting them to see to look for opportunities. Professors still need to be careful. Uh, they can't make a mistake because they're behind. As now we see that rotation coming out of Dirty Lake and the boys. Crazy cool. It's a stun. Half health. Blinks away. Gonna be A-OK -okay for now. But that's a big safety tool that's down now for the professors. And look at that map, F6. Fangtooth is gonna be coming up very soon. With one blink down. That should be a good opportunity for D-Lab to get active. It is a great resource expended on the side of Professors to help out D-Lab. They still need to be careful, though, when they go for that second Fang Teeth. We do know Lauber has pressure inside of that offlane. He's able to get that tier 1 down, open up that map for his side of there. So now when it comes to the second Fang Teeth, yes, Crazy Fool doesn't have that blink, but he still has that Riplash to put somebody out of position, and now he's level 6 to have that skewer. So this can go any way, because now we see that rotation from Severoff. Professor's first one on this Fang Tooth. This is where they like to be. But oh my god, Nitro tries to come in. He's a ton of damage for his troubles. Black Hole gets dropped. The Fang Tooth is secured by the Professors. Now the fight drops in the Coliseum. But North's getting shredded. The Survivor puts himself on the board. Up into the air goes Appy Picker. He's trying to shred, shred, shred his way through the rest of the Professor's health bars. But they are still standing tall, still with the numbers advantage. A survivor plucks one more. Toasty is toast. And the Professor's swing back. They lose one. Nitro in a bad spot, trying to find a way back out of this fight. He's very low. Survivor falls as well. Nitro finds the dash, finds the hit on the blast seed. He's up away, but it's straight into Appy Picker's crystal, and he's got nowhere to go. Lakinator finds the kill. What an extended oh. fight. Yeah, tell me about it, Spooky. They were able to secure the Fang Tooth, though, which is really great on the side of Professors. That's but that cleanup, that execution coming out of Dirt Lake and the boys there to understand that, hey, we might have lost this objective, but we're going to punish you for it. And just great ultimates coming out. Want to really highlight Toasty there with the Narbash. He was able to create some space between the Professors, splitting them up into two. And the Crash Bang Boom was just a great tool utilized there. And that's how they were able to pick apart them one by one, especially with that call. See ya. Yeah, Survivor cannot fall up here. He's picked up a couple kills. He's got some gold to his name. Gets out of dodge on that one. But you can tell d -Lab doesn't mind that they lost that objective. They took the fight afterwards. Now they're looking to take another one. They go over this mini prime. Let's start this one up. Keep in mind, professors, they're in the area to respond, but it's not going to be fast enough. Wow, that got shredded. Yeah, I mean, they have that Argus there, and that Particle Shredder is just going to be able to shred anything in sight. They don't even right. actually need their ADC of Lycanator there, because they just have that damage. When it comes to the Big Prime, it's a little bit of a different situation until that later part of the game, but they have everything they need. They have that sustain with that Narbash, and as long as they have at least four of those members, and they're right members at that time, they're going to be able to take down any objective if uncontested. 
Professors got to be a little bit faster getting those objectives. It almost feels like they have to be the ones that are on the objective first. And that seems true for both teams, honestly. We saw a few objectives go down when D-Lab was the first ones there. One when the Professors were the first ones there. And it just feels like we're at that state of the game where everyone is willing to rotate for these objectives. Get all five people on them. And if there's someone there, all right, we're going to fight. If not, we're taking the objective. We're not going to be shy about it. Or are they going to be shy about killing Happy Picker here? Six picks up the kill credit on that one. But with nothing on the board, oh. nothing for them to take, what do they get off that kill? They get pressure throughout mid lane here. They're going to have the opportunity. As you see now, they're pushing down that T1. And they're going to be able to open up this map a lot more. We always talk about which T1 is the best for your team. And it's the mid lane tower to be able to open up that map so you can get everything that you need. But here comes that aggression. And going to be a portal out of the Coliseum there. Not a whole lot taken for that ultimate. But it does allow D-Lab the opportunity to keep the professors in mid lane just a little bit longer. So Lakinator can take down that tier one on the left side. Not quite as valuable in terms of map potential as that mid lane. But in terms of gold, just about equal. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to be able to get a little bit more gold in their pockets. Nitro trying to get that pressure back into that off lane. But with that T down, T1 down on both of these side lanes, what that does for them is kind of equal to what the mid lane does. Now they're going to be able to get the pressure on those side lanes and be able to rotate through this mid and take it down as you see they're doing right now. It's going to be a four or five man rotation on this mid lane. And good lord, Soul Reaper dies! Lover, go ahead and step forward. Make sure no one else can take even a chance at looking at that tower. Secure themselves a little bit more gold. Right now, D Lab is on their A game, F6. I mean, these guys are playing phenomenally. And they're really taking the fight to the professors right now. I mean, that's what you have to do. A lot of times, a lot of teams sit back and allow Crazy Fool to make these shot calls, allow professors to take their picks when they need to. And D-Lab, you are correct. They're bringing the fight towards the professors, and you see how well that's working out for them. They need to take this initiative. They need to play for their picks. And we talked about that in the early game. They just need to not make mistakes. And right now, they're not. They're capitalizing on everything. They're making sure their rotations are on time. They're looking after these certain neutral objectives like towers and looking after the mini prime and the fang tooth with the third one coming up though this is a very important fight and they need to make sure they keep that same mental going into it so this fight here could honestly change the the flow of the game as a whole this third fang tooth is a critical objective if you take a look at the grouping you can see both teams are very well aware of it the professors very grouped up right now the labs on their way, but they're a little bit more separated. They've got some space between their team here. And I have to wonder if that's going to cause some problems for them trying to get into the objective. Just a little bit, but at the same time, the left lane, if you look at the dual lane, it's pushed up. They need to push that up on the side of Professor. So they have a little bit of time on D-Lab because they have the advantage with the wave pressure. And they're looking for a tether, and this might be it. That comes through, but Bobber taking a lot of damage. Black Hole comes up, and the Coliseum gets dropped down on top of it. Health bar is getting low. The Crazy Fool might be the lowest of them all. North picks up the first one, and Nitro gets the fight handed right to his face. The Zappy Picker blows through these health bars. The Particle Shredder rips apart that fight, and the third Fang Tooth goes the way of D-Lab. No, my word, we thought there was going to be a fight, but it was a massacre on the side of D-Lab. They capitalized. They just want to just highlight how great that Coliseum was. He waited until just about the end of the black hole, and they were able to trap all four members when they thought they could commit onto D-Lab there. Professors made that slight mistake, and D-Lab were able to come out the win, and now the second faint tooth is towards their favor. Just look at Appy Picker's slash lane right now. Five, one, and four. He is decimating these health bars every fight. And it's all of the setup that's coming from North. Like you said, that Coliseum switched the entire flow of that fight. Normally you see a black hole, you say, yeah, we fight here. This is ours to win. But North simply says, oh, you thought we were stuck in there with you? No, man, you're stuck in here with us. And they were not in there for very long. Not at all. Just great job on D-Lab there. And with this amount of pressure, 
they're gonna have this going into towards the big prime here that 20 minute mark that late game stage of these big objectives are coming into play yes they still have that lead but at any moment if they make one slight mistake they can mess up but the way they're playing right now just kudos to them and just if they can keep that pedal just fully on they're going to take this game out on game one now the question is where do they go next Cured themselves that third fang tooth okay technically second for them but we all know what we mean here or prime is an objective to be considered as well here are we expecting d lab to make a push for these tier two towers or do you think it's all about that or prime right now it's going to be a little bit hard when it comes to pushing these tier two towers because you don't want to push too far up to where you get punished right so they're going to have to look at their opportunities you're going to see them rotate throughout the enemy's jungle on the professor's side you're going to see them try to clear that and trying to get as much wards and as much vision control as they possibly can maybe looking for a pick or maybe just being able to catch somebody on the opposite side of the map and once they find that cur the certain triggers that they need to go for that mid big prime you're going to see them go for it full fledged with all the space that's been created by this front line, now we're going to see another rotation come through there north. Looking at Nitro, not able to take him down just there. That does connect onto six. We're seeing some aggression come through. Looks like the D Lab boys are just looking for a chance to find a pick here. Trying to find a way to get onto that Orb Prime. I want to turn our eyes over to Lakinator here, who, as we mentioned, was in not a great matchup, right? I have to hold that thought. Coliseum gets dropped. Now, you know, just talk about Lake Data for me at six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just at any moment, we know in Pred that the fight and the battle can just happen at any time. Lakin here, though, he's been playing a great game, understanding that he needs a little bit of farm, a little bit to kind of get to that mid game where he starts to three shot people at any point. And that is where he's at. He's kind of one of those ADCs that plays in the back line very well. He tries not to overcommit. He never wants to be in danger and he never wants to be the person to make that mistake to cost his team to lose that fight. So that's the game style that you're just going to see throughout it. But here, that colossal blow. Oh, Robert in a bad spot. Has to use the blink. Dashes to the sword. He's okay for now. Spends right a little bit of resource there to keep himself alive. Loses half his health. But does take a colossal blow offline. Keeps him alive. Elab not in the worst situation right now. That could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, I mean, they could have got the pick that they needed on the side of Professors to get the momentum swinging back into their favor, but unlucky for them. And with the Colossal Blow and the Skewer offline, it's going to be a little bit hard for them to really start a next fight or get a next engagement going. I mean, they still have the Call of the Call coming out of the Chimera to maybe set themselves up to get a Black Hole over on top. But at the same time, they're going to need to wait out a little bit on the side of Professors if they really want to contest the big objective if D-Lab chooses so. Uh, sounds to me like D-Lab as an opportunity here to make a play for that orb prime but they may end up waiting for the primal fang tooth instead it's been very quiet on that right side and that fang tooth is almost about to spawn in and we've seen quite a few times that primal fang tooth comes up and everyone immediately just goes straight to it here the lead that d lab has the gold advantage i have to weigh that fight in favor of dirty lake and the boys so my question then becomes do we see a contention at Primal Fang Tooth, or do you think we're looking at maybe a map split where D Lab goes Fang Tooth and Professors go or Prime? I, don't, I know any one of these teams know that the Primordial Blaze is such a tool to have in any game. And when that is up, they're definitely going to try and prior with it. They have the vision a little bit on the side of a perfect or on d lab to be able to see the or prime to see who gets in there and so does professors so they have vision control to be able to see if they need to rotate so you're going to see both teams trying to slowly converge themselves over to those this primordial fang tooth right, we're going to see them already making appearances over there professors and d lab Our both very attack. close to each other not close enough to trade blows you can tell where everyone's heads are at right now and it feels like D-Lab is starting to slow down just a little bit. I have to wonder if maybe this is the time where they need to be putting the pressure on and trying to force something around these objectives. 
Well, they do want to put the pressure on, right? They want to keep the pressure up, but they also don't want to make that mistake we were talking about earlier. They need to be as proficient as possible, and they need to buy their time. They have the lead, so they don't necessarily need to go all the way. As long as they're looking at the enemy's jungle, as long as they're looking for vision control, they're keeping that lead. Because if they're able to still get the same amount as farm as the professors, they're doing exactly that, keeping that lead. Another rotation over this left side, and oh my goodness, Glover in a little bit of trouble here. He gets shredded caught by all five members of the professors. They're gonna make a rotation immediately to this right side for Prime. Is what they're looking at, and it's gonna be a subjective trade here. Z Lab remain on the left side, taking down the Primal. That's a one for one. Yeah, I mean, D-Lab, right? They have that damage. They have the Kirin Argus over there. Lobber unfortunately got picked, and that was a mistake. But the fact that they're able to pick up a big objective allows for them to be okay with that mistake. Now, we have the Orb Prime on all four members. And now we have only four members on the side of D-Lab with that Primordial Faint Tooth. Looking at the pressure here, yes, D-Lab has the advantage when it comes towards any type of fighting. But when it comes towards being able to keep yourself along or alive long enough, to be able to get a good defense, that Orb Prime is going to help Professors try and get themselves back into this game. So now Professors, professors for the first time in this game, kind of have an initiative to take here. They can push these lanes up, try to siege these Tier 2 powers. The question is, how willing are they to take these fights around the objectives, right? The Tier 2s, maybe not too much of defense put up around those. Maybe a soft defense. If all five of the lab are there, maybe it's a hard defense. But the professors mm -hmm. don't have to take the fight, right? They could just push those minions up, maybe split the team, send a 4-1, and keep those minions pushing in different lanes. What does this these next few minutes look like for this game, and how important are they for the professors? This is really important for the professors. If they lose a big fight here, it's going into the way of d -Lab. You're going to be able to take down at least a couple of hemorrhages at the bare minimum. But what you're going to see coming out of d -Lab is they're going to be all five stacked up. They have the Primordial Fang too. Their strength is in within numbers. So they're going to try and push out at least one of these inhibitors. Maybe put uh, North inside the jungle waiting for a pick with that Coliseum. But they're going to need to stay together. When it comes towards the sides of the Professors, they have a little bit more advantage to maybe send one away. Because they have that or Prime. But they're going to need to be careful as they do see that rotation coming up. A full five man swinging over to this right side. They've already gotten the tier two in the mid lane. And it's just a numbers game for D Lab at this point. They're counting one, two, three, four, five, before they can fully expose that core on the other side. It doesn't really feel like they need to take down every objective, right? They can just take down these tier twos, expose mm -hmm. one inhibitor, and they're in a good spot. But instead, they're pulling back. They're playing this very slow, very cautiously. And maybe it just feels like they don't want to fight into that or prime, even with the prime. Work. I mean, it's just about making the right decisions at the right time. They have that lead. I mean, look at the Kiro, the two level lead against the Drongo. She's able to fight whenever she wants. And if they're able to get that prime opportunity, maybe looking for a pick, they don't want to be the ones that get picked out. They already made a mistake getting Lobber picked out. And that could have cost them if they actually made the call to go towards Primordial to contest Dirty Lake and the boys. But they chose the safer route. So it's really coming down to like, hey, we want to maintain this lead and not throw it. So you're going to see them do a little bit more of a slow pace, try and invade the jungles, try and get deep wards. And as long as they're able to keep this just amount of lead they have right now, they're going to be good to go if they're able to find that right pick. Here becomes my question, F6, right? How much time do they have to play this slow? If we take a look at some builds, you see Soul Reaper is one item away from fully completing a build here. As this game goes on, though that lead may stay the same, it will matter less and less. Nor and make it matter a little bit more here in the jungle, but he's taking a lot of damage. Has to take a step back, Crazy Cool tries to find the Riplash, doesn't quite connect. The black hole comes up, Toasty is no more in this fight, and North falls quickly afterwards. The Professor's surging forward, but Happy Picker and Lakinator both alive, and they're putting the damage right back out. The Purge comes through, and it takes two off the board. Survivor. Predator with the kill to North. He's still alive, looking for a little bit more damage. The Lake Invader has found a great opportunity off Abby Picker's crystal, and that is a massive 
fight, a clean wipe against the professors. Dirty Lake and the boys, they stand strong. Stand strong indeed. That fight started out in the favor of the professors. They were able to get a clean engage, but the retreat, the professionalism, the gamers that came out, they're able to back up. They have their DPS left on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys with that Quang able to get that triple knockup to clean up that fight with the purge coming in. And it's just the amount of damage poured out in the ending there just got into the favor of D-Lab. And that is what we wanted to see. As an absolutely massive W for D-Lab. And they're gonna take this opportunity to move into position. They may not be able to take down any inhibitors, but they can get all around this primal. With Chimera still a few seconds away from coming up. This is an easy start. D Lab show themselves this primal a second time. And I don't think this time, F6, the professors can afford to switch over to the Orb Prime. They cannot secure an objective in return. They're rushing to Sang Tzu. Ah, Link comes in. Toasty. A little bit more activity here. The Lakenator has already taken out Crazy Fool. Toasty leading the charge on the Soul Reaper. It's gonna be another two kills for Dirty Link and the boys. F6, what is happening? These fights are not going the way of the professors. Not at all. And what is happening is Dirty Lake and the boys came out with a plan and they have stuck with it. And they are continuing to put the pressure on the professors. You see there, they have the advantage. They only have three members left from the professors. And this is where they push these inhibitors. And now professors can't make the mistake and contest. And right now, Dirty Lake and the boys can do whatever they want to. They are on the cusp of serving the professors their first defeat in this entire tournament so far. Dirty Lake and the boys have come out to play today at six. Now with that, put her down. It's gonna be a quick move over to four fry. Themselves one more buff around their waist. Then they can look to end this game. They are just mere steps away from taking the advantage of this best of three. They are indeed. They just need to close this game out. They have the double buffs. We're taking a look at the items in CS here. We know Dirty Lake and the boys. Look at their kill participation. 52 Insane. assists. Oh my god. I mean, this is one of my favorite stats. Just showing how well of a team is playing together. This is how you see it. I mean, yes, the professors are playing okay, but they're not able to capitalize in these team fights. And Dirty Lake and the boys just have that advantage. They don't have as much anti heal going on when it comes towards the side of the professors, though. We only see that tainted scepter. And right now, their healing is out of control. So they need to get some tainted online because right now, if only Gideon's hitting them, that's the only anti heal they have. They've got scepter. And I guess they've got the lock shawl, but I'm not sure how effective that's been at, at stopping the healing. North, though, it's a trouble. Drops the Coliseum for safety's sake. All right, dash away, but he might be in danger. But take a look at the rest of his team. They are here. They are ready to back him up. Get him right out of danger. North, able to walk out of this one feeling A-okay. You know, you brought some attention to those assists, right? And how, how big that number is for D-Lab. I think it's even more integral to remember that that's like the thing for the professors. They like fighting as five. They normally have massive amounts of assists and they still do at 20 assists. There are seven kills. But this is just mm. showing you how effective D Lab has been as Crazy Fool is simply erased from the defense of the inhibitors. Now two down, only one left to go here, F6. And this will lead to a fully exposed core. I mean, they have all the pressure. Two inhibitors down, one inhibitor left. They have the ore prime still primordial blaze is just now finished and they have this pressure. You see them zoning them out from being able to contest this inhibitor going down. And once this last one goes down, this fight is going to be huge. It's either going to be a big defense win coming out of professors or Dirty Lake and the boys are just going to be able to topple the giants they once faced. Ultimate has been expended by Appy Tucker trying to take Soul Reaper down for the gun that comes up and the follow him down and the war is not long for this world and the d-lab boys just look to clean this up three dead for the professors and the professors need some pressure 
car is gonna crack under it all. Elap takes game one. Oh, oh my. Ladies and gentlemen, we thought the professors were going to be able to take that game one. But like we said in the beginning, D-Lab came here today to play. And game two is in control right now with Dirty Lake and the boys taking game one. First defeat for the professors in this entire tournament so far. It doesn't take them out of the tournament, but it does mar their perfect record. Dirty Lake and the boys... I mean, we said it time and time again. They've played against the professors so much. They have to understand what makes them tick. And they've shown that understanding here today. I mean, going into game two, professors, they now realize something has to change for them as well. Something has to change indeed. But I can tell you right now on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys, nothing needs to change at all. They need to keep executing. Grady pointed out on the desk, they need to play their game. And they definitely played their game today. Well, speaking of Grady and the desk, I think it's about time we toss things back to them. Let them break this one down. Send it your way, our dog. Take it away. Thank you so much, F6 and Spooky Mars, Dirty Lake, and the boys. What a wild journey we're taking you on today because that was just game one. Dirty, Dirty, Dirty Lake and the boys played so well and worked so cohesively as a team. What an absolute display of prowess and chemistry from both teams. You got to give it to the professors because they did their best and did what they could to respond and react to D-Lab. But they got to figure out a different strategy. Mugi, what allowed D-Lab to secure game number one? Well, since the beginning, we see that we are in presence of two great teams. Immediately, we see professors going on the aggression, killing Lobber, but we react immediately with something else on the other side. And I kind of like what Dirty Lake and the boys has done. They kind of punish the Richter. Richter is very strong, but if you run at him all the time, it's very easy to kind of punish him. And that's what like Dirty Lake and the boys did here. And then they start to run with the game. And there was like a big turning point. I ran like a big fight in first of the Fang Tooth, and Narbash heal was just insane. Amazing engage by professors, but Toasty healed everything. And suddenly, like the game turned into the favor of Dirty Lake and the boys, and they never let it go. Professor tried to look for some opportunity, delayed the game with that all prime pick after taking Lobber, but it was just too much. And the comp scaled too well, and Dirty Lake and the boys were just too clean. Full gas, no breaks for Dirty Lake and the boys throughout game one. But Grady, what else happened and how did the professors lose game number one? Well, Moogie Highway highlighted everything pretty well. Uh, the only things I can say is for the profs to win this next game, I think we need a bit of a change in draft. Nitro, one of their biggest playmakers, was on Sevrog, a late game scaling pick. He did, uh, his lane opponent did die early, just like Moogie said. Uh, however, he was not able to move around the map and do normal Nitro things. Professors normally rely on Nitro to, to do a lot and make plays happen on the map. You can't put him on the Sevrog if that's going to happen. Maybe the Sevrog pick was to de deny it from Lobber. But what I need to see is Nitro on a more aggressive pick, his traditional Xeris or his Serith, something that allows him to move around the map and make things happen for the Professors. Uh, the Professors duo lane got behind early and D-Lab duo lane got ahead and we really saw the impact of that uh, across the map. And that allowed D-Lab to secure game number one. There's a lot at stake for the Professors in game number two. And so we will be right back for game two in the semifinals between Dirty Lake and the boys versus the professors.